Hello YouTube, this is Nick G. Kiefer back with another video. I'm doing something a little bit different in that I'm actually redoing my testimony video of coming to Jesus Christ. My last testimony video was over two hours long and I'm going to shorten it. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it to you guys. I hope you guys enjoy. I was born into the Unification Church where we worshipped Reverend Sun Young Moon from Korea as God. It is like the Mormon church in which they say they are Christian and have the Bible, but also have another book which they esteem higher than the Bible. I had a lot of trouble, but always felt God's presence through it all as a child. Bless my parents' heart because they tried their best in raising us. My parents fought with each other constantly growing up and just could not give me and my brothers the love that we needed. This led me and all three of my other brothers to suffer from a deep depression and suicidal thoughts later in life. After high school, I flunked out of college at University of Washington, Tacoma, due to my untreated depression. That's when I decided to pursue God as a last-ditch effort not to commit suicide. I joined a year-long missionary trip through the Unification Church in search of God. The missionary trip was called Generation Peace Academy. Deuteronomy 4.29 says, But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him, if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. I wanted to know the truth about who God truly was and if I should continue with the Unification Church because I was expected to get an arranged marriage through them. It was during Generation Peace Academy that I kept meeting Christians who debunked my beliefs about Jesus and the Bible through Scripture. I realized there were big flaws in my beliefs as a Unification Church member. This opened my mind to wanting to know more about the Bible. After GPA ended in seeking after God for a whole year, I wanted to continue searching for God and the truth. I tried searching for God in all religions and even in the New Age. I started to become involved in practices such as Reiki, astrology, tarot cards, and even channeling spirit guides. The spirit guides that I consulted often told me of strange doctrines and did not seem to like the Bible very much. I wanted to listen to godly music instead of secular music, which was often ungodly. That's how I found a Christian radio station called Spirit 105.3 and listened to it religiously. It was both the music that glorified Jesus and the testimonies shared on that radio station which opened my heart to Christianity. When I went back to community college a year later, I attended a club fair and found a Christian club called InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. Something inside me tugged at my heart for me to join, so I did. It was there that I learned about the Bible and became a Christian in 2015. It was there that I also met my wife, Shalom. My parents were very upset when I chose to leave the Unification Church but I believe that God led me to Christianity, so I had to do it. Despite becoming a Christian, I did not have a deep relationship with Jesus. I prayed to the Father, but still had doubts and continued to practice the New Age for the first few years of my new religion. My wife and I became homeless for a period of a few months and this time really forced me to rely upon God. My faith deepened until I decided to get baptized in 2020. It was during this time that I asked the Holy Spirit to enter me and to build a relationship with Jesus. One of the first things he did was to convict me for my new age practices. Once I was saved and sealed, Jesus gave me the gift of discernment and I realized that these angelic spirit guides whom I had been speaking to were actually demonic entities. 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, 
in no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Up until now, the spirit guides helped me, but did so with ulterior motives. They wanted me to trust them so they could lead me away from Jesus. When they knew that I had been sealed and could no longer be drag my soul into hell, they turned and were no longer benevolent helpers. These entities kept waking me up in the middle of the night and showing me visions of snarling beasts leaping at me in the darkness. This time was difficult for my family because we all shared one bedroom and I kept waking them all up with my screams at night. My wife told me about how her mother is a pastor in Uganda and how she casts out evil spirits in the name of Jesus. So I built up the courage through prayer and I did so myself. Shalom had told me how these spirits feed off of your fear. And so I built up my courage and remember yelling at the spirits to leave in the name of Jesus. Afterwards, the atmosphere of our apartment changed and I felt much lighter. These spirits never came back again. And I no longer had those horrific nightmares and visions either. I gave up on most of the New Age practices after that experience and felt much closer to Jesus after this. But thick-headed me went back to one of the practices from New Age years later because I wanted healing for something and God was not healing me through my prayers. The New Age practice I went back to is a form of energy healing called the Emotion Code. I figured that Jesus healed people all the time. And so, healing cannot be bad, right? I have a passion for music and wanted to sing on stage. But my memory is so bad that I cannot remember music even after weeks of practicing. I always need the melody playing in my ear or else I do not know what to sing. This means that I can record music in my home studio, but can never really sing live. I thought that the new age could help me. This time, the demonic oppression came back even stronger. Matthew 12, 45 says, Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. After using the emotion code, I felt extremely sick and even missed church. Again, I cast out these demons in the name of Jesus and they departed from me. Instantly, I felt much better. Jesus spoke to me in the spirit after this experience and asked me if I would still be willing to follow him if it was his will not to heal me in this lifetime. I felt convicted because I sinned to accomplish my own will, but disregarded the will of God. I did not know why God would not heal me in this lifetime, but I decided to have faith anyways. Months later, I realized why God did not heal me, and it was because he wanted me to do something new and unique. I still cannot sing live, but there are already many singers in every church. God wanted me to create Christian music in the online space, where I have been able to reach thousands of people in many countries across the world. I'm not the best musician, but Jesus still chooses to use me for his glory. Besides, I know that Jesus will heal my poor memory when I see him in heaven. Since these experiences, Jesus has come to me and spoken to me in the spirit a few times, which I cherish in my heart. These experiences are few and far in between, but I love to write them down so I can always go back to what the Lord has done for me later. I've always been a social outcast and never felt the love that I needed from my brothers or parents growing up. 
But Jesus gave me extra servings of love as a result. God has answered many of my prayers, and Jesus has showed me how much he loves me. Now, I love to praise the Lord in song as one of my greatest passions. Thank you for listening, everybody. And don't forget to place your faith in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. God bless and have a great day.